Hazel 2024.1 is now out. Well, actually it's been out for a while. I'm only now getting around to making a video for it. I won't bore you with too many details as to why I've been away, somewhat absent, somewhat lurking in the shadows. Firstly, because BAM, new family member, Mariana. And then once I was just getting done with my paternity leave, I got sick. I got quite sick. Probably the sickest I've ever been in my life. And in fact, I'm still recovering. I'm still, I would probably call myself mostly deaf at this point with, with some beautiful like hearing double at different pitches in my left ear. <sighs> Worst. Anyway, I am starting to recover and I thought that it was time. It was time to talk about Hazel again. So Hazel 2024.1 is kind of like our first release for this year. We used to try to aim for like a quarterly release schedule, maybe four releases a year. I think that's pretty much dropped down to two now. Last year we did two, 2023.1 and 2023.2. This year, well, it's August, well, July technically is when 2024.1 came out. So at this rate, I would expect probably one more release, 2024.2, towards the end of the year. 2023.2 was our last major release. However, I did make quite a big video for 2023.1 one which has like an overview of some of the major interesting features that went into that i'll leave that link up there if you want to take a look that was our previously biggest release now 2024.1 i'm not sure if it's as big technically but there is a lot of really good stuff in it and specifically what i hope will actually prove to probably be the most helpful for you guys is we've tried to make the whole process of building and actually making a game in hazel getting that up and running distributing it a lot simpler. So in this video, I'm going to go through some of the highlights of this specific release. And I'm also going to show you how to actually get Hazel, how to build it, how to create a brand new project and how to build that project so that you can actually run it in the runtime, standalone from the editor and distribute it. But if you want a more detailed look into like even the minor features that went into this release, go to docs.hazelengine.com and have a look at the Hazel 2024.1 release notes. All right, without further ado, let's take a look at Hazel 2024.1. So first of all, how do you get access to Hazel? Patreon or slash the churno or get.hazelengine.com, the latter of which just redirects to the former. I've said this before, we are planning to release Hazel for free as an engine that you can use to make games completely for free. However, since we are not quite there yet and we still require funding to get there, the only way to currently access Hazel is through a $10 per month subscription on patreon.com slash the churno. Once you have become a member on Patreon, you can simply go to git.hazelengine.com, connect your Patreon account and your GitHub account together and you will immediately receive access to this GitHub repository. Now, a few things have changed within this actual repository, which I will quickly mention. First of all, there is no master branch. Well, there is a master a branch but we don't really use it it's not the default branch of the repository anymore instead the default branch of the repository is the latest major release branch what i mean by major release branch is there's actually a hazel 24.1.1 because there were some additional things that we wanted to fix. This 2024.1 branch, which is the default branch of the repository, meaning if you just clone the repository without specifying a branch, you will get this one. This contains the latest release. So if you would like a stable version of Hazel that you can use that will continue to be supported, by the way, meaning that we will fix issues that come out of this release for some time going forward whilst also developing the next release inside the dev branch, this is the branch that you want to obtain. Now over here in releases, you can actually use these tags to get specific releases if you like. However, what I would do is I would just grab the URL of the repository, which is github.com slash studiochurno slash hazel. And then all you have to do somewhere on your computer is type git clone recursive and then that URL. You can optionally specify a folder if you'd like. But again, because this is the default branch of the repository, which in the future will be updated to what the latest release is, you don't have to worry about anything besides that. So once you have that checked out, this is what you'll see. This is a completely fresh checkout of the 2024.1 branch that I have just checked out. How do you get this building? How do you get this up and running? How do I make my game? So you go into scripts and then you just double click on setup.bat. So we're gonna wait for this to, to happen. And there we go, that's done. So what that has now done is basically set up this repository as the active Hazel installation on your computer, done everything that needs to be done to go along with that, and also generated the project files, of course, that you need to build Hazel. Now those setup scripts will also make sure that you have, for example, a valid installation of Vulkan. By valid, what I mean is that it's the correct version, it's the version that we support, and the environment variables and all that stuff are set up correctly. By the way, these steps on how to actually get started and build with Hazel are also on our documentation on docs.hazelengine.com on the getting started page. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Okay, so hazel.solution. We're gonna double click on this to open it. Visual Studio 2022 is what we support. By the way, we do also support Linux. You can see there's actually a Docker file over here. I'm not gonna talk about this today because I use Windows and Hazel is mostly a Windows engine at this point, but 
it does work on Linux as well. Okay, so this is the solution. First thing I'm gonna do is change the configuration here to release. The reason why is debug is quite slow. We use that for, well, debugging. If you're just trying to use the engine, my recommendation would be to use release. And then over here inside tools, you can see we have Hazelnut, which is already the default startup project. However, instead of just hitting F5 and building that, what I would recommend you do, in fact, what you'll need to do the first time is actually build the entire solution. You can do that by just right clicking on the solution and hitting build solution, going build, build solution or control shift B. The reason why is because there are certain projects here that aren't actually part of like a build dependency to Hazelnut, but they are required by things like the scripting engine. And so if you don't build the entire solution, they probably won't get built and you may get errors. We are probably going to address this somewhat in the future, just so that you don't have to do that step. You can just build Hazelnut and run it and everything should work. But at this rate, that's how it works. Building, building, building. All right, so that should succeed. You can see it only took about a minute and a half, which is not too bad. Now with Hazelnut set as the startup project, which it should be by default, you can just press this button, hit F5, and you should open up Hazelnut into the default kind of sandbox project that Hazel ships with. And here we are. Here is the sandbox project. This is the animation test scene that Zero X has put together. I should be able to hit play, and you can see I can kind of <laughs> walk around and play this scene inside the editor. So all of that works nicely and should work out of the box. Now, I do want to quickly mention that Hazel is still very much a work in progress. I think one of our biggest issues at the moment is just compatibility. Compatibility with all sorts of different like PC configurations, graphics drivers, graphics cards, that kind of thing. So whilst this does work for me, and it obviously works for the entire Hazel team and many, many people outside of the Hazel team, it may not work for you. And that's okay. We are here to hopefully try and support you and resolve all of these issues so that we can get wider compatibility support for Hazel. So if you have followed these steps and for whatever reason it's crashing on launch, it's not building, nothing's working, just go to my Discord server, discord.gg slash the churno. Make sure you've connected your Patreon account to Discord and you should see this channel called Hazel Forum. That's basically like a kind of Discord forum type channel where you can make a new post. So please make a new post there, describe the issue you're having, screenshots, logs, whatever, we will try and help you. And in turn, you of course will be helping us out by helping us test Hazel and and iron out all of these compatibility issues. Okay, so this is cool. This is a project called Sandbox. As I mentioned, it ships with Hazel. It's just meant to have like some examples, some test scenes, that kind of stuff. If you go into the scenes directory, there's a whole bunch of scenes here that you can explore. I recommend you give them a go. You can obviously see how they're structured. And if you wanna look at the C Sharp code behind them, you can go to edit and then open Visual Studio Solution or just in the root of this directory, if you just show an Explorer, you should see in the Sandbox project itself, there is a Sandbox solution, which you can also open in Visual Studio. So how do I make a new project? How do I get my game up and running? Let me show you how to do that. It's very simple. You just go file, create project. You need to give it a name and a location. I'm gonna pop it over here into the projects directory and I'm gonna call it example project. Very boring. Let's hit create. It'll take a second. And here we have example project, as you can see, and we have a default scene here called main, which is stored inside the scenes directory. So we're ready to go and start building our scene. At the moment, you can see Hazel just gives you a completely blank scene. I know this probably isn't the best way to go for beginners because you might be like, how do I do anything? So in the future, maybe we'll have like a default camera, skylight, that kind of thing, so that you have some sort of scene. But of course, all of that is pretty easy to set up. If you know what you're doing, just go right click, create skylight. I'll start with, I'll just check the dynamic sky so that we can have like sort of a dynamic skylight, meaning that these parameters will control our skybox. Let's set up maybe like a plane to kind of be our ground plane. I'll also add a directional light over here. And now what I'm gonna do to make this scene a little bit interesting is I'm actually going to import a mesh. So over here inside meshes, I'll just show this folder in Explorer. I'll paste in this archery range mesh by K. I'll have a link to a pack that includes this mesh in the description below if you wanna check it out. Now back in Hazel, all I have to do is press this refresh button. You can see it's loaded in that mesh. And by loaded in, what I mean is that Hazel has picked this up automatically as an asset and it's registered it basically with the asset registry. So as far as Hazel is concerned, this is now an asset ready to be used in this project. However, if you know anything about how meshes work in Hazel, if you try and drag this in, you're gonna actually have to create an asset from it. We're not gonna talk too deep about like why this is the case. But if you have been following along, you can see this is actually an entirely new dialogue. So we wanna create a static mesh out of this in this case. And that's all we have to do. Let's just hit create. You can see now we have this in our scene. So let me go ahead and scale this up. Looks pretty nice. Let me just position the camera roughly maybe like this. I'm just gonna right click over here in the scene hierarchy panel and go to create camera from view. 
And now, if I just hit play, you can see that nothing happens. And the reason why is because we've now created a camera in that exact view. So if I hit play, you can see we're now playing our scene. Okay, cool. So now how do I share this with my friends? How do I build this and run this in the runtime? Well, that has become so much easier. All you have to do is go to file and build all. You can see it switched to this log panel automatically. There was a progress bar. I'll probably go back and like edit that into the video because obviously it was very fast for such a small project. But you can see that everything was built successfully. It's generated an asset pack. It's generated a shader pack, sound banks, whatever else, project data. All of that is now done. So to run this in the runtime, we can go back to Visual Studio over here. This is the root directory of that example project that we just made. So I'm just going to copy the path to that actual project directory. That means the directory which contains this hproj file, which is like the root of our project. And then over here inside runtime, you can see there is a Hazel runtime. I'm gonna set that as the startup project. I'm gonna right click, go to properties, go to debugging and just add a command argument that is the root directory of our project. I'm gonna hit okay, and then I'm gonna run Hazel Runtime. And as you can see, th that's the runtime, right? We can, it's just a game window. It's the, the app that it's built, it's in the runtime. How simple was that? Now, if you don't actually add in that command line argument, if you leave it blank, it will by default run the sandbox project that ships with Hazel. We haven't actually built that, so it'll probably crash. But hopefully you can see now, I mean, if you didn't know what the process used to be like, then you probably won't appreciate this, but this is very easy now. It's very simple, very straightforward. And to be honest, this is going to make my life during a lot of days or any kind of game jams where you have to get stuff out really quickly, much, much, much less stressful. Okay, so let's go back to Hazelnut now and we'll talk a little bit more about the major new features. I'm gonna try and keep this brief. As I mentioned, you can take a look at the release notes, but if we start off with a simple one, uh, one that you actually can't see is the asset system is now asynchronous, which basically means that when you load assets like meshes, textures, that kind of stuff, they happen on a background asset thread. They don't have to, you can still do this all synchronously, but the asynchronous loading helps a lot with performance as you would expect. And it also lets us do some pretty cool things like update assets automatically. So for example, I didn't really prepare an example, but let's just say we have, I don't even know what this is, zero X put together this scene as I mentioned, but we have, we have for example, this ammo box. I'm gonna try and do this to this ammo box. So let's see where that is. Okay, here's the ammo box static mesh, but I think in source. Okay, over here is the mesh source. So if I just show this in Explorer, let's open Blender. I'm gonna open up this ammo box inside Blender and then eh, what should we do to it? Let's just like, I don't know, let's just maybe close this lid or something. I'm gonna do this in a completely rubbish way. There it is, beautiful. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have closed this lid slightly. So now with Hazel still open and everything running, inside Blender, I'm just gonna go to File Export and then over here into ammobox.glb, as obviously a GLB, I'm just going to press the export button and you can see it's updated live. So now we have this ruining, I'm sorry Kay, I like your assets. I'm sorry that I ruined one of your assets <laughs> for the making of this video, but you can see that it's pretty cool how we can just do that. It just hot reload picks it up automatically and that all happens on a background thread on the asset thread. So it does not interrupt anything that you're doing in the scene or your hazelnut experience. Now you may have also noticed, speaking of new features, thumbnails. Yes, thumbnails are done kind of. They're probably not like 100% done, like most things in Hazel, but you can see that this makes prototyping very easy, make building scenes like this very easy because you can see all of these models, all of these 3D meshes are just loaded, they're rendered with Hazel's rendering. In fact, they're rendered like uh, a little bit overkill if you ask me, I mean, I'm the one who made this, but <laughs> a little bit overkill in the sense that like they, the, these, these images here, which of course are cached to disk and everything, but they're full on Hazel scenes with like all post-processing on like shadow maps, everything like this is, if there was something here that was blooming, let's see if we can find a material because materials um, use that as well. Yeah, you can see like emissive materials and everything. Like this is actually using the full on like Hazel Bloom pipeline and everything to generate this. So, and in fact, you can see like bits of an environment map over here because these are a bit shiny. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, it might take a second or two to generate the thumbnails if you navigate into a new directory or use something like search, you know, for the first time. But as I mentioned, these will of course be cached. So you can see if I go back into this directory, it's all kind of instant. So that of course is a, a, uh, a huge usability change in my opinion. Now the next feature, which this somewhat demonstrates is Zero X's, AKA Gems, amazing new animation system. If you go to hazelengine.com, there is a link over here to a Milanote board. 
that is probably the best place to get an insight into how this animation system is going because Zero X, aka Jim, actually keeps this up to date with what he's working on. You can see all the stuff he's done for 2023.1 and dot two, as well as 2024.1. There's all this stuff's in here and his plans like for the future as well, which is really, really cool. This animation system uh, allows us to like do like skeletal animation, blending, all of that stuff. And it works in a really, really nice way through this animation graph system. So if I find the player, for example, and I take a look at the animation graph, you can see that we have an animation graph with a state machine that has like a few different states that we can open. And like, it's pretty insane. I actually had a lot of fun figuring out how to use this for pretty much the first time for a lot of Dev 55. I made this game called Portal Me Away that had quite a bit of animation and not just like, you know, blending between walking and idle and all of that stuff, but also like doing one shot animations like attacks and all of that. I have talked about this new animation system before. I'll have the video linked up there. That's a little bit outdated now. It definitely deserves a follow up video. So hopefully I'll make something like that in the future and we can get more in depth into this just wonderful animation system that we have inside Hazel, thanks to Jim. And finally, the last thing that I wanna mention that's a pretty big feature is we have a completely new C Sharp scripting engine. This is one of those things that is hard to actually show because it's kind of like a behind the scenes change. However, Peter has spent a long time building something called Coral. Coral is essentially a replacement for what Hazel used to use for our C-sharp scripting engine, which was Mono. Coral is also something that we decided to open source and make public. So you don't need to be a patron to access Coral. It's just on github.com slash studio slash Coral. You can see that it's a C++ C-sharp wrapper around the .NET Core CLR library. The purpose of Coral is to provide a native interface similar to Mono, but in a more modern style and using .NET Core instead of .NET Framework. There were some kinks to iron out for Ludum Dare 55. So if you guys did watch me do that, you would have seen that there were some issues there with Coral and with Hazel and all that. That of course was like a pre-release version that I was testing. Now on 2024.1, or in this case, 2024.1.1, this is all stable. There are still like a few things to iron out, but I don't think that should affect most people. And Peter has done quite a good job at bringing .NET Core to Hazel, latest C-sharp version, like .NET 8, I think you literally need now to run Hazel as well. So it really is like modern and new. And he's also done this in a way that is reusable for any project, not just necessarily Hazel. So that's why this repository is public and you guys can benefit from that as well. And then Peter made a swift exit. <laughs> so Peter is no longer working for Studio Cherno. He left, I did not fire him. So I would just like to publicly thank him for all of the work that he has of course contributed to Hazel over many years. I and the team will definitely miss him going forward and we wish him all the best for the future. And that is pretty much it. That's all the major stuff that I wanna cover. There are of course lots and lots and lots of fixes and like usability improvements. There's some like mesh and material like sRGB kind of pipeline workflow improvements behind the scenes as well. The Hazel C Sharp API is always keeps getting expanded. Physics as well has received some pretty necessary changes to just help with making things a bit more flexible and dynamic, things like synchronizing kinematic bodies, being able to teleport physics entities, being a little bit more dynamic with like prefabs, for example, since prefabs require certain components and entities and systems to be initialized on the fly during a scene being played. Anyway, lots and lots of features. I hope that you guys do enjoy Hazel. If you would like me to make some videos on specific Hazel features or just even deep dives into the technical aspects of certain things in Hazel, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all for your support. Hazel, of course, would not be here if it wasn't for your lovely support. I really do appreciate each and every one of you supporters because I genuinely enjoy working on Hazel. It's a passion of mine. It's a dream of mine and you've made it possible. So thank you. So yeah, try it out. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.